The following program contains content that is not suitable for children. Viewer discretion is advised. Live from the Community Media Center of Marin, it's Marin Sanity. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear, look at me, I look so old, I'm dying. It's wonderful, isn't it? Hey, we're insanity. CMCM TV, right? Right in the middle of Marin County in, in San Rafael. So look us up on the internet. You know, you, you can see all these shows later on when you when you get off tonight. You can look on Facebook. You can see Marin Sanity on Facebook, see all the old shows. It's all good fun, you know. Yes. And, of course, that's what you do in Marin County, isn't it? Have fun. You get rich and have fun. <laughs> oh. I mean, what about these funny things? Are you sick and tired of this already? Oh, my God. Here, Let's guys. get me started. Yeah. Have, have you done this yet? Uh, oh. Oh, oh, God. No. <laughs> you have. I'm sure you've done it. I know you have. <laughs> and what does that represent, eh? Uh, the scam. No, that represents equality for ugly people. Yeah, yeah. Now everyone walking around with their mask on pretending they're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know. Don't worry about it. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, getting hot in it. So, uh, you know, we've got a great show for you tonight oh, in Marin County. <laughs> oh, yes. All I'm the way it's from... over. <laughs> the... uh, who's talking? I don't know. Who's is it that have I got two voices? I've got one coming out of my ear, some old lady. Uh, it's like I'm trying to talk to somebody else. <laughs> now, this is Griffin Daly right now. And I don't want to tell you, but the people we've got on tonight, yeah, we got Saul coming up in a minute. He's wonderful. I first saw Saul. Now, there's a little tiny story here. I was on a show down in um, Gilroy. You remember, mate? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, a funny little show in a bar. Everyone was crazy and drunk, you know. And I get up and did my silly little set, dirty jokes and stuff. And uh, he was laughing at me, and some other old guy was laughing at me. And then uh, he got up, and I couldn't stop laughing. It was so funny. And I've been, every chance I've had to get him on one of my shows, I, yes, come on, Saul, get on the show, because he's fantastic. And uh, who, was, who was the headliner that night, Saul? It was about seven, eight years ago. God cool, blimey, that long ago. Good God, I, I don't necessarily remember. I, no, I, tell you. Long time. I don't remember. I, I, I want to say it was Butch. It could have been Butch. No, I don't were, remember. You were stoned anyway. No, it was um, Robert Duchesne. <laughs> yeah. Was it was Robert Duchesne. He's funny and he's hilarious. We'll get him up here one of these days. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do right now, boys and girls, is I'm going to get the f hell out of here. And uh, I'm going to bring up a wonderful comic. Soul Trujillo. Yay! Hey. hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, thank you guys for. Uh, I'm in my car right now, 100%. I am on the road. Uh, this might be my only show when California closes tomorrow. So I had to go on the road to do a Zoom show. This is fantastic. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Uh, I, I, I am in my car right now. And uh, I, I've, I've come to a point where, check this out, this is where I'm at in life. I'm over pronouns, all right? I don't give a shit about your pronoun. I don't, I don't, and here's why. Last week I got called ma'am four times. Didn't correct anyone. I just kept it out in the ether. I'm like, yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter. I don't care. It doesn't matter. What am I gonna do? I'm a boy. And then my voice cracks and they don't believe me either way. Just whatever. I'm man enough to know that I, every day of my life, I have to prove to people that I'm not the lady who killed Selena, okay? And now, I don't know if Marin's gonna necessarily get that, all right? I don't know if there's enough Mexican ladies doing the sign of the cross in your town, but there's a lot in mine, okay? Uh, I, I currently have a day job that I hate. Now, uh, day jobs are awful because day job coworkers, some of the worst people on earth, all right? You got a career in here, career coworkers, you know, they that's your godfather to your child or whatever but if you share a fry basket with someone you hate that person with everything you have in your heart all right last day of my day job back home before i moved to los angeles one of my co-workers he was telling me all of his fears i wasn't asking but he was telling you know he was like yes yeah, so i'm really scared of spiders terrified of spiders but scorpions are pretty cool would you just say to me 
I haven't even clocked in and you're throwing riddles in my face. R Let me clock in first. Because if you really think about it and break it down, all a scorpion really is is a spider with a knife, all right? What you're <laughs> telling me is you see a scary looking guy in your neighborhood, you'd be like, ah, call the police. You see that same guy with a switchblade, you're like, ooh, look how, look how charismatic he is. What you gonna do right now? I am next to an in and out and the smells are just in my face. All right, and I'm trying to be a good boy. All right, I'm trying to be a good boy. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Mexican and uh, I, gr I grew up Catholic in an old house, like an old giant Victorian house, very religious family. And it's fine. It just, it just made tuck-ins weird and different. Like tuck-ins, uh, like in a normal household, I imagine they're sweet. Like the mom says some normal, she's like sweet shit. Like, all right, sweetheart, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. It's adorable. It's not adorable when there's actual bed bugs though. Uh, <laughs> so my mom, what's she gonna say? I'm like, why are you giving me this game day speech tonight? We're losing the battle by a lot. But I'm not gonna act like my mom didn't try. She gave me a version of that speech. You know, she would tuck me in. She'd be like, all right, mijo, uh, I love you. Jesus loves you and the devil's real. And then she'd leave, okay? <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't see her for like eight hours. I am six years old. Thank you. Oh. Uh, I, uh, I moved to LA and the first seven months of living in LA, uh, I was living in this car. This car right here, living in LA. And some people were like, look at you, doing what it takes, chasing your dreams. And a good percentage of people like, you need to move home and go manage a GameStop or some shit. Grow the fuck up, all right? Because it's done. The dream is over, all right? The dream is over. And uh, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm with that second group of people because I hate living in my... I hated living in my car. Like you, Because I, I hated sleeping the same way retired people relax, okay? Just tilted back a little bit with my arms across my chest like a vampire. Waking up every, every random sound. Ha, ha, ha. I, I, I didn't like that type of sleep, all right? I don't like that. And I'm a good person. I was raised by good people, okay? And that means uh, no more masturbating, okay? Oh, you live in your car? <laughs> you live in your car? No more masturbating, all right? You recognize that that is a luxury that if you have a home to go to, all right? Not if you're living in your car chasing your dreams. There's a fine line. There is a fine line between dreamer and homeless guy jerking off in his car at a park. Can you imagine a cop He's tapping on my window. Windows are all foggy. He's like, hey, what are you doing in there? And I got to pull my pants up. I got to just try to be somebody. He doesn't want to hear that as an excuse. He hates that as an excuse. <laughs> and um, I I'll let you know right now, there's the way we treat homeless people is insane to me. It's insane. We complain about the weirdest shit. Like I heard some people talk about, I don't like the tents. The tents are the worst part. I'll let you know right now, I like those tents, all right? Because if we're not going to fix the problem, all those tents do is block our eyes from nefarious shit happening under tents. If you take the tent out of the equation, is some guy getting his dick sucked while heroin's going into his neck. And I don't want to see that, okay? I don't want to see a poison in, poison out, all right? I'm trying to get home from my day job. I don't want to see a hobo dialysis, all right? I feel like I shouldn't have to bear witness upon that. And people think that's really rough, really rough. But those same people, same people don't give homeless people change. They don't give them money. And I give homeless people money. If you don't, you should, all right? You gotta stop as assuming what people are gonna do with that money, all right? Stop it. Give them money, but not too much money, all right? Some change, maybe a dollar, five dollars, pushing it a little bit. I used to watch TV like celebrities like P. Diddy, he would get a homeless guy a hundred bucks. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You just killed that person. He's dead 100%. Why would you do that? I don't want to assume anything, but if I am, that's a lot of drugs, all right? And he's not putting that through a Monday through Sunday uh, pill separator. This is my Tuesday <laughs> prep. That's one of the smoke. No, he's going, that's all one go. That's all one go. Uh, he gets sad. These jokes do get sad, but when you live in your car and you witness all this, that's uh, this is more. I'm more of a LA news reporter now, and it's kind of weird. Uh, I I do. I am married. Uh, sorry, ladies of Marin County. Uh, you can have 
We can't have any of this. Uh, <laughs> I'm married. I love I love my wife. I love her. And and and, and here's the thing. I love being married because the consistent sex that's oh it's the ba- some people the joke about like oh you're married now you know since I've been married lots of sex it's amazing and I say that as a beta fat male okay as a beta fat male the the, the consistency of because here's the thing if you're people when you say when people imagine a fat person having sex they automatically go ew and I go you know what that's that's mean but if you're imagining your head a mess, that's what fat sex is. I completely understand, all right? It's not good. It's not good. There's too many things moving. That's why you're still, and it's not great, all right? Every time I make love to my wife, I have to hold my belly back like it's about to fight someone outside of a bar. Like, you need to take it easy. You need to take it easy, or they are not going to let us in. That's just a part of the problem here, all right? I am trying to lose weight, guys. I am. Uh, when I first started comedy 10 years ago, I was about uh, 440, I'm about 300 pounds now. Lost about 140 pounds oh. and I'm, I'm going to lose more. Uh, I'm gonna lose, uh, I'm gonna lose uh, 100 more in a healthy amount of time. I'm gonna do it in 17 days, 17 oh. days. <laughs> <laughs> and when I tell people that, they go, that is not healthy whatsoever. I'm different from other fat guys, all right? I don't deflect as to why I shouldn't lose weight. All right. I, I don't do that. I don't deflect. All right. Because I had a guy ask me, you're not worried about all the extra skin? You know, no. Give me all the skin. Do you have any idea how better my act would be as a comedian with all that skin? Is if wait, all these outdoor shows when they call my name, look at these peasants walking up there with their feet. It'd be so much better if they call my name. I come from like a palm tree gliding to the stage like a flying squirrel, giving people <laughs> high fives and fist bumps, doing backstrokes like a cartoon flying soup. That thing, it just sounds amazing to me. Uh, uh, and I, I can't wait for it, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I am excited uh, because my friends, this is weird right now because of politics, because of the pandemic. It's split in half. And I'm not talking about Republican, Democrat. I'm talking about OnlyFans and conspiracy theorists, all right? <laughs> half my friends are on OnlyFans. And if you don't know where that, that is, that's where fours and fives think that we want to see their genitalia and it's not true we don't all right it's not like celebrities either it's like your cousin it's like what are you what are you doing with your life and then, and then the other half uh, i had a buddy tell me that he puts duct tape over his webcam because he thinks the government's always watching that's a, it's a little far it's a little far and i'd like to think that i'm a centrist in between those two like i'm never gonna sell, show my body on the internet for money because no there's no market for that ill <laughs> or even worse, even worse, there's a market for that. What are you doing with your life? What are you doing? Why are you paying for that? And I'm never going to put duct tape over the webcam. That's that's silly. What, what do I give a shit? Even if the government is watching, what are they going to watch me order weird stuff on Amazon? They're going to watch me look at porn? Good luck. Good luck if that's what you're doing, government. You better, you, what are you doing with that money? Because every now and then, don't think, don't think I won't break the fourth wall, government, all right? Don't think it won't start off normal like I'm watching pornography regular, but then I look into that webcam and go, oh, you like that, big brother? Don't think I won't do that. Don't turn my camera off right away. And they go, he knows and doesn't care, and he's doing weird stuff on purpose. <laughs> um, I am, I've got a mullet, if you can't tell. Uh, first of all, I'm doing a Zoom show in a car, so automatically that's very <laughs> mullet-like actions. Uh, and it's not like it's, I'm not from the South. All right. I'm from Stockton, California. All right. So this is a cherry picking mullet. That's what this is. This is an agricultural (laughs) mullet. All right. Of the land mullet. And, and, uh, it's pretty, you know, regular mullets are standard pretty for, you know, business to the top, uh, party, which is, it's business up front party in the back. But when you have, when you have this face, it's very much missing child's poster in the front. And then the guy who kidnapped that kid in the back. And <laughs> I just want to see my kids, Maria. You can be in the room. You can be in the room. <laughs> I am, I am, I am, uh, I am the, uh, like my dad was a cherry picker and his dad was a cherry picker. And that means that I ate all the cherries. All right, clearly ate all the cherries. And it's, it, oh man. 
Good God. I feel so bloated right now from all the car stop snacks of peanuts and my all the stuff that now that I have a wife, she's going to be very upset with my sodium levels, which I, I mean, I've done crank off a knife once. Now I'm worried about my blood pressure. So uh, I don't know. Griff, I yeah. think that's how I'm going to end my set, doing meth off of a knife once. <laughs> that's all right, bud. <laughs> Thank you very much, Saul. That was fantastic, man. Appreciate you had me cracking up like you wouldn't. We'll see you soon. Later, buddy. Saul Trujillo, everybody. Great yeah, stuff. Hey. Great stuff. Woo, Woo yeah. Woo. All right. Marin TV, that's what we're on right now. And here's another logo for it, just in case you didn't know where you were. Community, community Media Center of Marin. Okay. Yes. Now, look. Here's another guy I've been watching for a long time. We've done a lot of shows together over the years, including one show. He won't want to remember this. He won't want you to know about it. But in fact, we did a show one time down in Japantown, you remember, Oliver, where we had to dress up as women and do these like uh, drag <coughs> things. It was, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. He was hilarious. I know I was funny too, but he was really funny. And here he is tonight. Dressed as a normal human being, ladies and gentlemen, it's the wonderful Oliver Graves. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for, for having me here and everything. Thanks for dressing up I for was, us. Oh, yeah. We appreciate it. I, I, I was having flashbacks as Driffin was introducing me. I'm like, we did a show in Japantown. I had to stop and think, like, wait i think he's serious we did oh when i was dressed up yeah in drag okay that was a long long time ago i can't even believe he remembers that griffin of all people i was i was about to play it off like he's old he doesn't know what he's talking about he completely is just it's gotten to him the, the age but no that that was true and wow that's a lot to remember we don't get to do stuff like that anymore we have the whole you know social distancing thing and i hope people yeah. are participating with that when they can you know wearing masks works out well for me because i am i am a skinny person with gap teeth so yeah it comes out well here see that wonderful gap people ask me questions like do you eat corn on the cob through a picket fence like that's how like i i, I get it but now when i wear a mask they don't see the gap teeth so they just ask do you eat <laughs> i do eat i like to eat i liked uh i like trick-or-treating like having candy that's fun to do good old marin story actually i had a friend he was from Novato. i was growing up and i was from santa rosa we wanted to go trick-or-treating together but his mom would not have let him have any candy so he could go trick-or-treating with me but at the end of the night mom threw all the candy out because she was worried about what's going to be in there like from a stranger i was like really that's not the world i want to live in i don't want to live in a world where kids aren't exposed to marijuana and drugs and razor blades like i want them to be able to put that stuff <laughs> in their mouth I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen if a kid bites into a razor blade? He's not going to be able to eat solid food for two weeks. He's going to lose a little weight. Like, I think that's okay. You got to teach your kids, though. It's, it's your responsibility. Teach your kids that if they go trick-or-treating and they find a house and they're giving out drugs, that you go back to that house <laughs> over and over. <laughs> like reading about celebrity stories. I, I read a cute one about Matt Damon and Matt Damon's wife. She grew up a fan of Matt Damon. Like she would go to every movie he was in, had posters in her room. Then she got to meet him and she got to start dating him and she got to marry him. And I'm like, that's, that's adorable. Like that's the cutest story ever. I hope that happens to me. I guess it's kind of messed up to hope that Matt Damon becomes a widower. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not fair she got to him first, that's all. I read another cute story about Dolly Parton. 
famous country singer Dolly Parton. Hope you know who she is. If not, that's cool. That's fine. But she has a very iconic look. And she entered a Dolly Parton lookalike contest and she didn't win. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. I'm like, I, I would love to try that. So I entered a Oliver Graves lookalike contest and I was disqualified for dressing up like Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> do you think matthew broderick one day said i'm so hungry i could eat a horse and before he knew it he was going down on sarah jessica parker oh. <laughs> hey <laughs> So something I do to make extra money is I sell serial killer memorabilia on eBay. A friend of mine heard me say that. He said, no, you don't. You just sell your old things. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how friends come and go in life. One day you're chatting, the next day they're a missing person. <laughs> Just thinking about the saying, when people would be like running really fast and someone would go, hey, whoa, slow down. Where's the fire, buddy? Now we probably shouldn't say that anymore. Because <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of like they're almost everywhere all the time. I feel like we should just be more honest if someone's running really fast or like they're driving really fast. So you're like, whoa, slow down. Where's the hot sex? <laughs> where's this hookup you're rushing off to like where are you going and do they need a third <laughs> I actually had a threesome recently that's that's difficult I don't know if anyone's ever had a threesome before and found out how like there's just there's just so many limbs and so much crying by yourself in the corner <laughs> <laughs> So I'm unemployed and live with my parents, but it's all right because my mom's a hoarder, so she'll never throw me out. <laughs> I actually have a lot of, a lot of stuff myself. I have a lot of things, a lot of toys, a lot of games, a lot of stuffed animals. I had a friend come over and they saw my bed, which is just covered. He was like, wow, you love taxidermy. <laughs> <laughs> do you collect action figures looking to get a new magneto figure if you don't know who that is you're living your life wrong <laughs> but there's two i'm looking at one i love the face like magneto just looks he looks really good in there but then his body not so good Another one, the face is awful. Like, it just doesn't look like Magneto. But the body is perfect. I have the same problem with action figures that I do with all the women that I'm dating. <laughs> Except with action figures, I can take the head off the one I like and put it on the body of the one I like. <laughs> with the women I'm dating... If I keep doing that to them, eventually somebody's going to catch me. <laughs> I'm a big movie fan. Love watching movies. I have to watch them the way they're intended to be seen, though. Like I watched the movie Speed on Fast Forward. I watched the movie Sideways, rotated 90 degrees. And I always make sure to watch the movie Big on a Viagra. <laughs> watch porno -y movies sometimes. Watching one with a one-legged woman. And she was masturbating herself and leaning on her prosthetic leg. When she orgasmed, she fell over. 
talk about getting off on the wrong foot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I do like movies. The Avengers are a really big thing right now. I love Avengers superheroes. I like to think what well, what would I be if I was one? I was like maybe I'd be like the Hulk, but instead of getting like really big and strong, I'd smell really bad. <laughs> Like, I just start sweating a lot. It'd be like a skunk, like, just awful. I'd have my own line, like, you're making me nervous. You wouldn't like me when I'm nervous. <laughs> I got my first pair of yoga pants recently. <laughs> they were used. <laughs> Which is exactly why I bought them. Sometimes I poop with the door open. That's not a joke, it's more of a warning. <laughs> Putting that out there to people. Some people like to go skydiving, they go rock climbing, they do all kind of daredevil stuff. Not into that but I want a little bit more excitement in my life. So I poop with the door open. <laughs> it's, it's definitely fun. Cause man, when someone walks in and you lock eyes while you're pooping, oh yeah, they wish they were skydiving. <laughs> Next time, just read the newspaper. Read the newspaper. Well, I write for the newspaper now. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> try, All try my dreams sport. are coming true of people using my articles to line their bird cages with. <laughs> or starting fires with it. That's a great way to start a fire. Not that I encourage that activity. I think I just did unintentionally. If there's a lawyer in Marin that can help me. Anybody We've want to do some blow? Anybody? We've got lots of lawyers here. <laughs> We're getting we're, we're getting a little uh, interactive here, Marin Sanity. You can, no. Yeah. I'm sorry. Who's performing right now? Is it? Okay. I'm getting a little salty now, but that's that's fine. That's part of it. We're gonna skip the blow then. You guys don't need it. You're a little too riled up. No, do the blow. Yeah. But no, it's it's fine. We're we're good. So something I do sometimes is I'm not married, but I will wear a wedding ring because I don't want people hitting on me. <laughs> and it works. Whenever I wear it, no one ever hits on me. Sometimes I forget to wear the ring and still <laughs> no one ever <laughs> hits on me. It's really tricky, like the whole dating situation. I went out with someone one time and they were asking me like, so are you a fan of, you know, the 49ers or the Sharks or what? I was like, Ex excuse me? Sports teams? Is there something about this <laughs> that makes you think I care about... <laughs> the Giants or the Warriors, you know, outside of my Dungeons and Dragons campaign. It was the mask. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with that. I don't even know what to do with that. I'm going to, I'm going to hand it over to Griffin. That's what I'm going to do with that. Thank you very much, everybody. And thank you hey. for insanity. Oh, but great. Hey. Thanks buddy. That was hey. fun, fun, fun. Yeah. You should have done the blow thing. That was, Anyway, thanks. That was Oliver Graves, everybody. Funny guy, funny guy. And now we've got somebody else who's not dressed up too much, but she's wonderful because she looks fantastic. Anyway, you see her. One of my favorite comedians in the Bay Area, the lovely, lovely Princess Eerie Diamond. Thank you. Yes. That was very sweet of you, Griff. I appreciate <laughs> that. Oh, sorry. I ran over the applause. Go ahead and applaud. Yay. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I um, 
So I hope everyone's doing okay out here with all the craziness. Um, I want to kind of introduce myself a little bit to you. Um, first of all, I uh, used to be kind of slutty. So that's something. That's fun, right? Uh, yeah, no, here's the thing, you guys. Uh, I used to sleep around so much that I might have some kids out there I don't even know about. You know what I mean? Like, 100% <laughs> use protection. Um, I, uh, uh, so I've been, it's been in the lockdown and I've been, I've been trapped here and I've been doing, you know, the regular stuff, watching the Netflix. I've been watching all my favorite movies. My favorite movie genre is Japanese horror films. You guys like those? They're so fun, right? They're so, they're three hours long. You can't really figure out what's going on. And uh, there's <laughs> A dead wet kid. Have you guys ever noticed that? Always a dead wet kid. It's usually like coming out of like a cabinet or like walking backwards on the ceiling, you know? <laughs> and it's like skin like a frog. I don't understand how they stay so wet. It's crazy, you know? But here's <laughs> the thing. I decided that when I get my own sitcom, I am going to have a neighbor next door dead wet kid. So fun, right? <laughs> It'll be great. It'll be like ding dong. And I'll like open up the door and like, that's weird. No one's here. And then I'll look up on the ceiling of the porch and she'll just be like this. And I'll be like, get wet kid. How'd you get out of the well? Come on in, you know, just something like that. It'll just be fun. I don't know. That's just me. Um, I've been in my house too long. I, uh, right. Um, okay, so what else? Uh, I am a vegetarian, vegetarian, and I would like to tell you why I'm a vegetarian. That's okay. That's okay. Um, this is the reason why I'm a vegetarian. Um, when I was in high school, I was uh, eating over at my uh, really good friend's house. She lived actually with her parents who were from Cambodia, and uh, I was eating this uh, big old bowl of chicken soup, and I was eating it. I was eating it, and then very slowly, this chicken head just floated to the top <laughs> and looked at me. And um, I, in my head, I kind of panicked. I freaked out a little bit. Like in my head, I could I could seriously hear hear it. Like, where's my body? You know, something like. <laughs> right? I had a family, something like crazy like that. It was like in my head. And uh, I, was, I was, I was staring at it and I was staring at it. And, um, and uh, my, my friend's grandpa came over and uh, Mr. Sam comes over and he goes, uh, oh, oh, no, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. And he pushed it back into my soup and he goes, Shh, you sleep now. <laughs> it just goes you eat you eat and um uh and here's the thing uh you guys it wasn't that he stuck his fingers in my soup like that wasn't the creepy part <laughs> the part that freaked me out is i swear to god i saw that chicken wink at me before it went back in <laughs> <laughs> so that's why mm, you know you might have had the same thing happen to you I, uh, what else can I tell you about my, ooh, uh, ooh, I used to be half Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, this is what happened. Super exciting story. Okay, um, I did one of those ancestry.com tests. Have you guys done these? Super fun, right? Super fun. Uh, I found out that I am, um, I'm 30% French and I'm 20% Irish. And I am 50%. Wow, my mom's a big old fat liar. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. It turned out that the Mexican guy I thought was my dad growing up, he's not related to me. What? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, don't, it, I, I don't know. I don't know. And then, and then I confronted my mom and I was like, you know, I told her what happened and, and she told me that uh, DNA tests are usually wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I was like, wow, you might want to tell the police about that. Um, 
because I think they're using them a lot. <laughs> I don't know, dude. It, but also, don't you think the cops could be like a little cooler about the whole thing? You know what I mean? Like, uh, like uh, Griff, your DNA was all over the crime scene, buddy. You were going away for a long time. What again? Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, here's some good news. You're also 60% Dutch. <laughs> so now you can join that Dutch prison gang, right? Uh -oh. <laughs> they let you carve your own shoes. That's 100% true. I, um, no, I uh, used to work at a sex shop in San Francisco um, back in the day, and they sold all the stuff. Uh, they sold, you know, like whatever you guys would need, like ball gags and you know, all the good stuff. Um, and uh, the, the, the one thing that was kind of weird was I was in charge of all the penis rings. You guys know what a penis ring is? That's, that's like, a, like a engagement ring for your penis. That's what that is. That's <laughs> and um, the, here's the weird thing. I was, uh, there were, there's like three sizes. There's small, medium, and large. And uh, here's something you guys might not know. Um, for the ladies, you probably don't know this. Um, if a man walks into the sex shop and walks up to your counter and you ask him what size penis ring he needs, he will always say large, ladies. That is 100% true. Yeah, yeah. And um, here's the thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of guys in San Francisco right now who have tape wrapped around the ring just to keep it on. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but I don't know. I uh, oh, one thing that was kind of weird that happened when I worked at the shop um, next to the lunchroom was um, uh, like these glass shelves, and they had all the latex dildos on them. And um, the lunchroom one one day somebody brings in a George Foreman grill, right? So we were like, "Woo, sandwiches, paninis, right?" which was not good because uh, after a while, the latex dildos really started to kind of have that cooked ham smell. And <laughs> yeah, and so it was like, you know, people would be like, you'd be like, ah, throw it in the bag. And I, I feel like the best way we could have avoided the whole thing and made it better for the, for the clientele is if maybe we made like a, a lube that smelled like mustard, you know, something like oh. that. <laughs> it was my idea, but it never, never, it never took off. Um, I used to actually be really hardcore goth. Um, I, uh, I, I mean, like, let me tell you how goth I was. I was so goth that I wore a Victorian wedding dress to Great America. That's how hardcore <laughs> I was. Okay. And um, it was a bad idea because they wouldn't let me on any of the rides. The only ride they let me on was the free fall ride, which was fun. Um, but that kind of sucked because I like I lost my parasol, my opera glove went flying. <laughs> I got a suntan. Oh. <laughs> it was very upsetting. It was very upsetting. Um, but here's the thing, I love that scene so much. And you guys have to understand, like, you haven't seen a bar fight till you've seen, like, Edward Scissorhands and Vlad the Impaler, like, smacking each other with their lunch boxes, you know? <laughs> like, like, really, good. like, someone lost a fang. It was crazy. Um, I don't know. It is, it is kind of funny, though, because, um, like, I don't know how many times people told me they were a 200-year-old vampire, and I was like, Really? Why do you still live in your mom's basement? That doesn't <laughs> compute, but um, I am trying to be a better person. So yay for, no, okay. I am, um, okay. yeah, my mom didn't believe me either, but I, no, I'm trying to like to not to use pronouns that like offend people anymore, you know? Um, for, I started calling my favorite sex position reverse cow person okay yeah and um you guys probably you might you might not know what that is um let me tell you what it is it is when okay the lady is on top all right 
but instead of facing the man's face, she is turned in the other direction, facing the camera. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's that's what it is. Um, I I want to I want to just leave you with a quick story. Uh, I was helping my friend. Um, funny story. I was helping my friend clean out her grandma's garage after her grandma died. Um, it's not the funny part. It um. And uh, we found an eight track tape and on the eight track tape, it actually said um, a lustful sex life of a perverted nympho housewife, swear to God. And I was like, what is this? And then I flipped it over and it was like, you know, like uh, fornicating female freaks, stuff your gills with fluff girls and muff thrills. And I was like, is this like a stag sound tape? And it was. It was, it was like, it was crazy. It would, oh, also it said uh, free, French, free French tickler inside, which I thought was interesting. Um, if you guys don't know what that is, that's like a promise <laughs> ring for your penis. And um, so we find an eight track tape player, right? And we put it in and we're listening to it. And here's the thing, it was, it was, okay. It wasn't that it was just the, the sound, the audio of a porno. It was the fact that everyone in it had a mid-Atlantic accent, which was so strange, you know? I mean, it was like uh, listening to, uh, it was like, it was like, <laughs> it was, it was like a wonderful life, but um, a porno uh, with those accents and um, everyone's having sex. The whole thing was really strange. Uh, it was like, a, ah, come over here. <laughs> Come over here, you sexy beast. Why don't I take off my knickers and I'll sit on your kisser? Like, just what is happening, you know? <laughs> just, it was traumatizing, but it was also really cool. She wouldn't let me keep the eight-track tape, though. But, okay, well, I'm Mary Diamond. Thanks so much, you guys. Yeah, I thank you, Ray. Thank you, darling. That was wonderful, 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 wonderful. Yes, Marin County, Marin Sanity people. It's very lovely here. Um. Yes, everybody. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves out there in Marine Land and uh, Marine Sanity Land. Isn't it great? They all Yay. these beautiful comedians. Uh, yeah, look at my beautiful wife's painting on the wall. Isn't that wonderful? Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> yes, a surprise headliner for the show. A wonderful, wonderful comic. Very funny guy. Give it up for Chad Opitz. Hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 Thanks for coming out tonight. Oh. Oh my God. Uh, hopefully we can entertain you guys. It has been difficult to find quality entertainment at this time. I know that because I recently caught my roommate watching a 70 minute documentary about the song, Who Let the Dogs Out? Uh, which was entitled, Who Let the Dogs Out? Yeah. And I think... I think he went in wanting answers. You know, he was like a grizzled detective. He's like, I've been waiting 20 years. I want to know who did it, damn it. Because <laughs> uh, I heard him like halfway through the movie say very seriously from his room, who let the dogs out? Like he was, up, he was wanted to know. So I was like, I got emotionally invested in this. I was like, oh my God, who did it? So I asked him like once the movie was over, I was like, did you find out who let the dogs out? And he was like, it turns out anybody could have done it. So, <laughs> They're still out there. It's a, <laughs> I saved you 70 minutes. I spoiled that picture. Uh, do you guys wonder if communist Russia has an R pillow guy? Is that a, <laughs> I That's just good. I wonder here. Um, I don't know if you guys heard this. There is going to be a hot new toy on the market this Christmas, a social distancing toy uh, called Get the Hell Away From Me Elmo. <laughs> it's gonna be a big hit uh yeah i've been experimenting a lot with food at this time i don't know if you guys know this but any burrito can be a wet burrito if you are crying so that'll save you a dollar or two at the taqueria just make your own sauce at home okay i also saw on a box of popcorn that they list the nutritional ingredients for unpopped popcorn, which seems unnecessary. I don't really know who the hell is like, 
no, I want it this way. And they're just guzzling unpopped kernels. That seems like a psychopath move. I don't know why they're doing that. I've been doing a lot, a lot of listening to music. And um, I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but it takes me about 10 seconds into any Bob Dylan song to figure out if it's actually Bob Dylan or somebody making fun of Bob Dylan. <laughs> Like, he's like, you really sound like this? What the hell? Yeah, and they're like, that's your boy. What the hell? It's wild. Oh my god. My roommate was watching a lot of UFC stuff early on in quarantine, and a phrase they use a lot in UFC that I laugh at is when they say "pound for pound." Like this fighter is the best fighter, pound for pound. Because when I hear the phrase "pound for pound," I just envision a British person paying for sex. That's the only thing that goes. Get me a pound for a pound. Hey, maybe a wee bit of bangers and mashing. I, I just think of Griffin Daly paying for sex. That's all I think yeah. about when I hear. <laughs> of course. Of course, I do. I do miss going to the movies. That's one of the places I love to go to, um, because that's where I felt sexy. Okay, that's where I felt like I belonged. Right, dim lights smell of butter that's my world right? <laughs> uh, i feel good in a movie theater i feel very sexy uh i watched the top gun 2 trailer recently and it made me laugh because like it's like he's 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 the best we got at age of 63 tom cruise is back he's gonna get him but i really like recent tom cruise movies because now he insists on doing all of his own stunts and it's getting crazy at Jackie Chan level insanity at this point where he's scaling skyscrapers with no wires. He's holding onto planes in midair. And I think it's because Tom Cruise finally realizes that death is the only way out of the Church of Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do whatever. There's no way out anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get him out of there. Oh my goodness. Oh man, I hope you guys had a good Halloween. I love Halloween a lot. Like that was a little sad that we weren't able to like go out and about like we used to. I think this might be like the only Halloween where like toilet papering someone's house could be seen as an act of kindness. <laughs> or, or if, if you did that to somebody's house, they're like, they were, hey, they were out. thank you so much. This is so sweet of them. They must really like us, you know? I used to have a tradition. Uh, I would go out, I would get hammered and when people would ask me what I am, uh, I say, my father. You know? <laughs> and I would have to uh, dress up like a can of Coors Light just so that he'd hold me, you know, one of those situations. I don't know if uh, you know this, but any blanket can be a weighted blanket uh, if you don't do a lot of heavy lifting. You know, <laughs> that's a heavy ass blanket. I'm a weak, weak man. That's all it is. I sometimes wonder if cocaine was so big in the 80s because things were so cool that nobody wanted to sleep. You know? <laughs> like, oh my God, like RoboCop is out. I, I'm not going to bed. I can see that in Predator. This is the time of my life. I'm, in, I'm gonna invest in neon and robots. The world's never gonna end. Oh my God. I think once this is all over though, uh, schools are gonna invest in uh, drugs, not hugs programs. To uh, you know, get people. You know, they don't want you know. You, you should know how to do drugs at this time. I'm really bad at drugs. I wish I was better at drugs. My aforementioned uh, roommate is very good at drugs. I got into an argument with him the other day about whether apple juice was real. <laughs> he was like, he's like, you ever bitten into an apple and no juice at all comes out? I'm like, oh my god, that's happened. He won this argument. This is phenomenal. The other day he was like, uh, who is that actor? He's been in all kinds of stuff. What's it, uh, a Jack Human? And I was like, what? Like, there's no, definitely no actor named Jack Human. And he was like, yeah, he's been in all kinds of stuff. He's been like Wolverine and shit. And I was like, Jack, what do you mean? He's like, oh, whatever, it's the same thing. So he's having a very fine quarantine because he knows how to do drugs. <laughs> We got any daylight savings time fans here? Do you guys enjoy daylight savings time? <laughs> Bruce Baum, you look like you love it. Don't lie to me, Bruce Baum. 
You're a daylight savings fan, man, from way back in the day. I used to hate it. Now I'm just yeah, like, well, I don't care anymore. I'm fine with it. I, but I used to just get mad when I think about it. I'd be like, oh my God, why, what is the point? Like we get together as a society and we say, uh, we're going to do a little throwback. You know, we're going to take it back now, right? Like we get together and we go, if I could turn back time, I'd make it dark at five o'clock. That way when I get off work, I'm more depressed than I was before. <laughs> Point of it all. I do watch a lot of movies. Uh, sometimes even when I don't need them, I'll put on subtitles. I watch a lot of movies with subtitles, but I'll just put them on whenever. Uh, but the other day I accidentally, instead of putting on subtitles, I put on Dom titles and I just got slapped and spanked through a whole movie. <laughs> a little BDSM joke for you. you. You seem like a BDSM crowd. I don't know. <laughs> Made a fun musical discovery recently. I think I found the perfect song to play during a threesome. I think it's got to be Randy Newman's You've Got a Friend in Me. <laughs> I broke quarantine recently. Uh, I'm, a, I'm not proud to say it a little bit because it was to get sex. You know, we're all horned up. We're all trying to uh, do what we can do during these times. I don't know if you guys are horned up, but I have been. So I got out. I got out of here. I got hit up by a lady, and she was like, "Do you want to come over and watch the movie Jaws?" And I was like, "Hell yeah, I do!" Oh my god. You know what happens when you watch the movie Jaws? It's a foregone conclusion. You're going to have sex during Jaws. And we ended up doing that. And during the middle of it, in the movie Jaws, uh, she turned around and looked at me and she goes, we're going to need a bigger dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a stupid ass joke. Very stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're one of the few audiences. I was like, they'll know the reference. They'll know the reference. Oh my goodness. I always get mad when I'm watching movies and like movie characters are uh, like they meet at a diner, but they don't like eat anything. Does that upset anyone else? <laughs> like they just meet there and it's like, why did you? And they don't order anything. And I'm like, get the hell out of that diner. That lady's mad at you. Come on. I forgot this is gonna be on TV, Griffin. <laughs> so I'm just like testing out things and they're failing miserably. No, they're not. It's be all right. You'll oh, be it's right. all right. It's Marin Sandy. For Thank you for testing. Wrong. Thank you for using us as a test. You, What's you that? Can't, you can't Thank hear you everybody for laughing. Using us as a test. We're Check doing it as a test? You can't hear everybody testing. laughing, but they're laughing. Oh. Lots of them are muted. They're muted, but they're, they are laughing. Griffin, I think you're lying to me, but that's okay. I am, but you know. That is all right. Anything that gets you through, man. Anything that gets you through. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that very, very much. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I did get hit on recently. That's a uh, not a common occurrence in my life. And usually wasn't when it does occur, it's usually by a large, burly gentleman. You know, I check off a few boxes. <laughs> uh, bear community, I understand that. Like one time this guy came out to me. He was chatting me up for a little bit. And then he drops this one on me. He's like, hey, I'm staying over at the old Bass Western. How about you come by later? Uh, we can have some cookies in my jacuzzi. You know? I was like, oh my <laughs> God. You know how hard that was to turn down? That sounds incredible. <laughs> that the most comfortable, uncomfortable experience of my life right there. Like, I almost want to say yes, just so if he made a move, I could be like, what? I thought this was a completely innocent, suds and sniff little situation, sir. What the hell? <laughs> what kind of cookies that's what i was wondering i wanted to know like if you had like oatmeal raisin snickerdoodles i don't know but what he you know what he actually did come back to them i where it was it happened when i was working in the movie theater and he brought me some delicious chocolate chip cookies <laughs> they were delightful but i did not take him up on the uh, jacuzzi situation <laughs> i don't know what the hell is gonna happen man I've been, uh, anyone been drinking at home? Ray. <laughs> Who is that? Who's saying that? Who's, who's cheering this? David. David Stompy? What you got, David? 
Wait, who who said yay? David. Well, I didn't say yay, but I did show my bottle of uh, pale ale. Sierra pale Nevada. Ale? Is that your is that your go to beverage? The Sierra Nevada. Oh yeah. Casey. Oh hell yeah. When I would go out initially, like during, like before the pandemic thing, uh, I would want to get something tasty. I want to get like a sex in the beach. I think that's a good cocktail, but I couldn't afford it. So I'd ask the bartender to make me a rim job on the bus. You know. <laughs> it's just like a PBR with the edges licked by somebody with a cold sore. It's uh, not the best beverage, you know, not the finest one. One time I was drinking at a bar in Santa Cruz and uh, I ordered a, a Greyhound because I think that's a very good drink. And there was a guy at the bar and he shot me this look and he goes, uh, real men don't use straws. And I was like, oh, shit, like this guy's trying to emasculate me for ordering a mixed beverage. Uh oh. And then it turned out he was just like a pissed off environmentalist, you know. <laughs> like, you know, guys like you really rev my Prius. Oh, you know? <laughs> pissed off of me. Like, Sorry, dude. We got anybody here who likes the uh, sultry songstress Adele? Anybody? Do you know who Adele is? <laughs> Jane, Jane Ray, do you know Adele? <laughs> I'm looking at you're too, you're too young. Too young? Oh, okay. I do. You guys are left. We're only, yeah, we're, you're only up on the, like, the top 40 hits right now, and Adele is just way, she's way too old for you. Oh, my God. I get it. I'm a big fan. I actually uh, wrote a delightful song for Adele because I don't know what she's been going through in quarantine. Maybe she's lonely. I don't know what's going on. But I wrote a ditty for Adele. Weight. What's that? She's lost a lot of weight. I saw that. People were like, oh, my God. Like, she's hot now. And I was like, dude, she was hot before. She's hot now. I'll take Adele any way I can get her. Okay. <laughs> I enjoy her. I'm not going to complain about Adele. So I wrote this ditty for Adele. Uh, and if you like it, maybe let her know that I'm out there pining for her affections on Zoom, if you can. So here, here we go. This is my song for Adele. I'm doing a little stretching for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Adele, I'm Chad. Got a sweet beard and I look pretty good in plaid. <laughs> I want to take you out for burritos and tea. So please go out with me. <laughs> I'll buy you some curly fries. <laughs> and savory surprise and I want you to coagulate like a blood clot in my heart and I won't even care during sex if you fall <laughs> thank you Marin I appreciate you indulging in my nonsense have a good night, everybody. Chad Oakfish. <laughs> Give it up for Chad, yeah. everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, give it up for Sol Trujillo, who started hey. off the show tonight from hey. LA in his car. Hey. Yes, yeah, Sol, if he's still around anywhere. Oliver Grace, hey. a regular on the show, a regular in Marine, great funny guy. And the wonderful Princess Erie Diamond. Yes. Yeah. Love you, darling. Hey. Good stuff. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, don't forget, you can see this show again in a couple of weeks on Sunday nights at 11.30. Just look at Marine Sanity, and you'll see ch Channel 26, right? CMCM TV. Yes, enough Yay. plugs. Yes, that's loads of plugs. Now, get out of here. We'll see you next month. <laughs> Great work, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh.